You might have seen a viral video that's going around recently that talks about reverse engineering a $20,000 military router, or really a MANA radio, and that stands for Mobile Ad Hoc Networking Radio. Although that video did introduce a ton of people to the idea of MANA radios, or at least to some of the technologies surrounding MANA, I'm going to add more details in this video and give you some insight to the open source community that is tackling this problem head on. The huge difference between five figure military grade Mane radios and the DIY projects that are going on in certain communities right now. Now that's not to say that these projects aren't worthy of your time, but it's important to acknowledge that there are key differences between them. The open source community project I'm talking about is called Open Mane. I'm going to compare and contrast the project that Open Mane is working with and military grade Mane radios. So stay tuned for that. This video won't have any digital products for sale. It's just going to be education. So you'll want to watch the whole thing because I'm packing all the information into this video. And before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me and it helps the channel grow. Let's start by setting the scene. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the top tier military grade MANA radios that exist. One company is called Silvis and the other is called Persistent Systems. Silvis has a radio called the Streamcaster and Persistent Systems has a radio called the MPU-5. So you're able to snag one of these radios on the secondary market, each one is gonna run you five figures at least. So expensive, two things, a proprietary waveform and an integrated ecosystem. You might not know what a proprietary waveform is, so I'm gonna explain that. It's basically a custom-built radio wave that accomplishes specific goals. For example, with these systems, they are low probability of intercept, low probability of detection, and they also have anti-jam properties. This means that the bad guys aren't going to be able to listen to your communications, they're not going to be able to tell where you're coming from, and they're not going to be able to stop you from communicating. Distance Systems has their Wave Relay, and Silvis has their MN MIMO, which means Mobile Networked Multiple Input, Multiple Output. Developed by RF engineers, professionals who have spent years learning how to make these types of systems. But it's not just the proprietary waveform, it's also the integrated ecosystem. You're not just buying a single one-off unit, you're buying the ecosystem, the software, the user interface, the radio systems, and how they all interconnect together. Basically, it's an it just works solution for mission critical situations. It's also worth noting that the hardware is top notch. You're getting IP68 enclosures, you're getting swappable frequency packs. I know that the MPU5 has the ability to just change frequencies with a module that you can swap on the unit. You get some really high end features. And this is the part that is probably going to piss some people off, but you don't really need one. Let me explain. Unless you are being issued one of these devices for your job, odds are that it's just not necessary. If you have the means or the wherewithal to pursue these types of systems, then by all means do it. But you don't necessarily have to in order to get a system that is good enough for say community resilience. The features on these high-end devices are really designed for contested environments, like militaries dealing with adversaries. So you'd be paying a massive premium for capabilities that you most likely will never use. Be akin to buying a Ferrari as your grocery getter. Does it look really cool? Yeah. Is it practical? Absolutely not. The issue appears to be that there aren't any lower end options, and that is where Open Man A comes in. It's a community driven project which seeks to develop affordable Man A gear. Definitely in the early stages, and it is mostly DIY, but I am in that community and I can tell you there are people working really hard to make it better every day. My biggest contribution that I know that I can make is awareness. So by telling everybody about Open Man A and the project in general, I'm hoping that people will go and contribute their time and their energy. Cool thing about open source projects is that you get a lot of community involvement to make the project better. Unfortunately, that does come with cons. People are using their free time to develop this stuff. Oftentimes there's no money involved. So people have to take money out of their own pockets to develop this stuff. Oftentimes these open source projects can take a lot longer to get legs. What is in the Open Mane recipe? And I say recipe because it's not a product. It's not just something you can go buy off the shelf. It uses things that you can buy off the shelf and things that are openly available. So I would see it as more of a recipe. Open Mane is building a recipe for how to make your own Mane gear. Software. 
OpenWRT is a Linux-based, lightweight, highly customizable operating system for networking devices. The software turns your device into a router that has advanced configuration capabilities, and then Batman Advanced gives it the instructions on how to route intelligently. Batman stands for Better Approach to Mobile Ad Hoc Networking. It allows nodes to continuously evaluate the quality of connections to its neighbors. A really cool thing about Batman is that if one node goes down, the mesh self heals itself because traffic is able to be rerouted because all the nodes are continuously evaluating the nodes around them. Whenever multiple nodes are moving around in a network, you might lose links in one case or gain new links in another. Hardware. Right now, OpenManA is using the Raspberry Pi as its test bed. And if you don't know what that is, it's just a single board computer that people use for development. You can add things to Raspberry Pis that allow you to do really specific things. Like in this case, if you add the right chip and the right connections, you now have a very special form of Wi-Fi that not a lot of people know about. And that's exactly what this project is doing. There's a special type of Wi-Fi called Wi-Fi Halo. It operates in the 900 megahertz band, which gives it some different qualities. For example, 900 megahertz Wi-Fi can travel a lot farther than 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. It also has better penetration capabilities like going through walls or foliage, whereas 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi can oftentimes get blocked by walls and trees pretty easily. 900 megahertz Wi-Fi has a range in the miles instead of say the hundreds of feet. As you can imagine, that does come at a cost and we'll talk about that later whenever we compare the capabilities. Quick moment to compare proprietary waveforms to IEEE standards. So if you've heard of IEEE standards like 802.11, AH, S, B, E, A, X. IEEE standards are known worldwide. Anybody can use them for their equipment. That takes us back to the open source nature of OpenManA, using an open source Wi-Fi standard, 802.11ah. OpenManA is exploring 802.11s and Batman Advanced, but it's important to note that Batman is designed to be better for mobile ad hoc networking. Quick head-to-head -head comparison of these top tier Man-A radios and Open Man-A, so we can get a really good picture of what the difference is between a DIY project and professional military grade equipment. Data throughput. With your Silvis devices or your persistent systems devices, you can expect to get into the hundreds of megabytes per second. For Open Man-A, because we're only using the 900 megahertz spectrum, you can expect between one and 15 megabytes per second in optimal conditions. It's really important to be real with yourself about the capabilities that you need. Not everybody's gonna need hundreds of megabytes per second. You can really get away with a lot of situational awareness between one and 15 megabytes per second. You can send pictures, you can send data packages, you can update points on maps using ATAC, you can even stream maybe a single video. 99% of people, one to 15 megabytes per second is gonna do just fine for a resilient community network. Let's talk about security. Your high-end MAN-A devices are capable of military-grade encryption, LPI, LPD like we talked about before, and anti-jam. These are all security features. It's important to note that open MAN-A devices are still going to have standard Wi-Fi security, which is sufficiently strong for most cases. And unless you're head-to-head -head with a nation state, which you probably aren't, this isn't necessarily something that you would be worried about. Voice and video integration. Your higher-end devices are going to have that type of capability natively. You'll have hardware video encoders and push-to-talk natively capable. In source projects, you're typically going to be relying on software to do that transmission for you instead of efficient encoders on the hardware itself. We'll talk about network scalability a little bit here. So your top end systems are going to be capable of hosting hundreds of nodes and they are built to handle this type of ecosystem. Open source projects can support multiple nodes in a community pretty easily, especially for the things that you are most likely to be using them for. But it's important to note that there are limitations. Systems have gone through a ton of testing to make sure that they are reliable no matter where people are moving and what they're doing. Whereas open source systems are just not tested as much. There's not as much money behind it. That's not to say that it's not good enough for your uses because 99% of the time it will be. Let's talk about a hardware comparison. 
high-end units are going to be IP68 rated. They're going to be super ruggedized, capable of being thrown on the ground, run over, and continuing to work no matter the environment that you put these things in. Buying an it just works solution. People shouldn't be worried about having to baby their radios. Open source projects, on the other hand, rely on people in their spare time designing 3D printed enclosures in CAD. I've seen a ton of ingenious designs that people have made. I've even dabbled a little bit myself in making radio enclosures. They're not water and dust resistant and they're not metal. And this isn't to say that it's not useful for your use case. In fact, for the most part, it's gonna be exactly what you need. But these things are not hardened, engineered, super durable, ruggedized radios. I truly believe that the ingenuity that I've seen in this community, that will come with time. Somebody's going to develop one of these enclosures that uh, satisfies all of these tenants. But again, people are working hard in their spare time. The best thing about the open Man A project is that you can get started for around a hundred bucks. My opinion, instead of downloading a nearly $100 PDF, you can go to the Open Man A GitHub and get all the information you would ever need. Conclusion, are these Open Man A devices a reverse engineered version of a $20,000 military router? No, it's a completely different flavor of something similar. Still an incredibly valuable project. To my knowledge, there aren't a lot of solutions in the middle. Things like Open Man A are going to drive innovators to a point where they can start capturing parts of the market that aren't $20,000 a radio. As Open Man A develops more, people are gonna have access to that DIY knowledge, that recipe that's going to exist in this open source community. And that's why it's so important to tinker and push the limits and become involved in these type of communities. We're pushing technology further and making it more accessible for everybody. Go support Open Man A and stay tuned for some really cool technology that's gonna be coming out really soon. Thanks for watching.